Here we have our TCP IP connection project. On TS side, we added two new input signals, so we will also make some adaptions on MCD side. One of the signals is out destination container 1, which we need to access the container on the rear end. Now we go to this MCD signal server configuration and adapt the TCP IP data accordingly. Our 2 axis Y container 2 has 1.4 offset and our new signal 1.3. Click listen. Let's view our marble run from the front side. We want to add in sources for our boxes and our marbles. So we mark them and then click object source. We find it in the mechanical section. We have two trigger options, time based or once per activation. Once per activation we will choose here. Now we want to add in our sync. But first let us switch to top view. For a new collision sensor we create a new box with a height of 200. Then we switch back to our isometric view. Here we select the box and make it to a collision sensor. Afterwards we change the color to make clear that it is a sensor. If we want to we can even hide all sensor spaces. They are not displayed anymore but still work. It is also important to add a prevent collision to our box and the containers. Otherwise it will cost a lot of computing power and will slow down the whole simulation. As next step we add in an object sync out of the mechanical section. For a sync we need to select a collision sensor which defines the area within which the objects are removed. Sinks remove only dynamically generated objects. Additionally we can restrict that by specifying the individual sources of objects we want to remove. At the beginning of our simulation we have our sync set as an active. Later on our controller could change that. We can create new objects by activating the source. Careful! Here no double click. We see that there may be multiple instances of objects simulated at the same time. Caution! Activating too fast causes several objects to occupy the same place, which is not shown. Let's look into our container. When we activate the sync, we see our objects disappear. Now we will show you the functionality of read-write devices. They are under the point custom behavior of the mechanical section. But before we are able to use them we need some tag forms just above it. A tag form consists of minimum an ID and a name. Note that the name of the tag form is not equal to the name of the tag. We are also able to add some parameters. We use an additional boolean which is important for our sorting logic. Because we have two sources we want to assign the same tag we need another form as dummy. Those won't be read so values don't matter. Here comes the assignation. Boxes use tags of the form destination tag. The marbles use the tags of the form dummy. Now we add in a read-write device out of our mechanical section. As a sensor we choose our collision sensor box position. As a tag form we choose destination tag, then we choose a device type, here reader, and an execute mode, here always. It means that with every triggering a new object is written. We do similar steps to create a reader. 
This time we choose the collision sensor at the end of the conveyor belt. As tag form we again use destination tag and as device type a reader and execute mode always. For testing purposes we add our reader, our writer and our object source and our object sync to our runtime inspector. Then we start our simulation. At triggering of the first sensor, which also is a rider, the values of the rider changes. At triggering also the reader changes its values. Also the point tag instances is added. When we try to change our container parameter during runtime, it has no effect on our system behavior. We are not sure if that is a bug or not. With every new object instance of our source, the ID is counted up. We can see that in our reader and writer. And in our new tag instances. In order to have tag instances where the container1 parameter is different, we need a tag table. We find that also in our mechanical sections under custom behavior. We choose our tag form destination tag and add a couple tag instances. For every instance we can change the parameter container1. Afterwards we save our tag table under a convenient name. In order to use our tag table we need to change our writer. Under the point tag table we now can choose our tag table. To even connect this parameter to the PLC we connect it with the signal that we created in the beginning. Our parameter is called container1. The signal is called out destination container1. Now we add the signal to our runtime inspector. Let's start the simulation. We see that our first tag has the property container1 true. So it'll land in our first container, which is the front one. The next box has the property container1 false as value for a signal and also for our reader and writer. So the box will land in container 2, which is the real one. For the last one we have true again, so it will land in container 1 front.